guys, welcome back to my channel. I have been on vacation for the past eight days, and I realized I uh, only had one video up last week, which I felt terrible about. I had another one pre-recorded, but if you follow me on Snapchat, you know why that one did not go up. Uh, but I do have a video for you guys today. I was going to do a talk through, get ready with me, and just kind of explain to you what all has happened to me throughout these past eight days but i don't know i just felt like it was pointless to just go through everything i will tell you what happened to me last night out of all the stuff that's kind of happened throughout the past few days will and i were five minutes from being home from vacation last night and my tire blew out on my jeep while i was on the highway uh so that was oh ugh. So yeah, it's been a crazy few days for me, but I hope today's video will get me back on track and I hope you guys will enjoy it. I am basically talking about all of the new products that I have collected throughout the past month, month and a half, I would say. Uh, some of these I know people have already done videos on, but I guess I'm going to give you guys my first impressions if I have had the opportunity to try them long enough. Uh, but yeah, just a ton of new products to talk about and um, just, yeah, a little chit chat here and there. Let's go. I guess I'm trying to bring the uh, bumpy ponytail back in style. These first products, I know several people have already talked about. I've already used these in videos, but I just wanted to give you guys a rundown. These are the Becca Luminous Blushes, and there are six shades. They are based off of the uh, Shimmering Skin Perfectors, and they're just basically really nice highlighted blushes. So when you put them on, you're going to feel like you have blush and highlighter on. Uh, so I'm going to go through and do some swatches for you guys. I'm going to start out with Snapdragon, which is my favorite color out of the entire uh, color collection. This is what it looks like. It's a nice peachy pink shade. The next shade is Tiger Lily. This is a very orange based blush. Uh, it doesn't look very flattering on me. This is it right here. It's very, very orange, but I would assume it's going to look great on uh, tan skin tones. Although I know that my friend Mallory wears that color. It's like her favorite. She has very fair skin and it looks great on her as well. The next shade is Camilla. And this is kind of like your standard bright pink shade. Uh, almost like a Barbie doll pink is how I would describe it. The next color is called Foxglove. I love this color. This is probably my second favorite shade. It's more of a uh, neutral pink. It's a little bit more on the fuchsia side. Like it has a touch of fuchsia to it. The next color I am actually wearing right now, very slightly, ever so slightly. I mean, if I had dark skin, I would rock this color all the time. Uh, but it is called Dahlia and it's a really pretty kind of deep plum color. Obviously, if you apply it full on, that's what it's going to look like, but I have it on my cheeks really lightly today. And then the last shade is Blushed Copper. Uh, this has been out for a while. This was launched with the... Was this out before the Becca Jaclyn Hill collaboration? I can't remember, but I love this color. It's a really nice kind of burnt orange shade. So love these blushes. They are absolutely gorgeous. And if you're a fan of Becca products, you won't be disappointed in these. Next up are the new Urban Decay Vice lipsticks. I have 10 shades. I'm not going to swatch all of them. Um, I will swatch a few for you. I'll direct you to Mallory's video. She did full lip swatches of these uh, lipsticks, but I'm going to swatch a few that I like. The first one is the shade Naked. This is kind of like the iconic color for Urban Decay. Everybody loves Naked. And it's not really Naked. It's actually a pink shade. It's very pink on me. Uh, so that is the first color. The next one is called Conspiracy. And there's four or five different uh, lip formulations for these lipsticks. There's Comfort Matte, Matte, there's Satin, there's like all kinds of different finishes. Obviously, you guys can go and check out what the uh, finishes are. This one's called Conspiracy. It is a kind of shimmery, bronzy brown color. I like that one. I think it's really interesting. And then also the shade Rush or Back Top, not Rush. This looks like Rush from the previous line. The shade Back Talk is going to be a very popular one, I think. It's that kind of purpley mob color that everybody's going for right now. Uh, and then I want to swatch this one because I actually, I've not even 
looked at it yet. I think Laura swatched this on her uh, Snapchat and she was kind of laughing at it. This one is the shade Big Bang and it is a metallicized finish or a metallized, however you want to say it. So this is kind of like a fuchsia pink with a lot of sparkle in it. So those are just a few shades from the collection that I have. I just want to throw this out there. I took two of the lipsticks with me on vacation. I just wasn't in love with the formula. It, they just really reminded me of a lipstick I could get from the drugstore, like maybe a Milani formula, very similar to that. Uh, I didn't find the staying power to be all that amazing. Now, I will say I am wearing uh, one of the lip liners on my lips right now. I'm wearing the Rush lip liner on my lips. Let me find it for you. So this is the lip liner in the shade Rush. Uh, really do like these, but I don't think the formula has changed for the lip liners. They're still the 24-7 glide-on pencils, to my knowledge. Um, so yeah, I don't understand what the huge change was in the lipsticks other than the fact that there's a hundred colors and they do have a few different finishes from before. Um, so yeah, not like, oh my god, in love with this formula. They're pretty lipsticks, but you know. Their lipsticks. Next up are a few products from the Estee Edit. This is Kendall Jenner's uh, line with Estee Lauder, I believe, and they sent me a few of their products to try out. The first one I am wearing today is called the Barris Bronzer and Number no. Two Medium Deep. So this is a pretty dark bronzer, but also it's a very peachy tone bronzer. I have it on right now and you can see it, it's not cool at all, but it's not warm. It doesn't give off that orangey tone. It's very peachy in my opinion. Uh, also, if you're buying this for the splash of uh, kind of glitter or luminosity in it, just know that that is going to fade. Um, I have been using it and you can see right along through here, it's coming off. So don't expect this to be like a bronzer and highlighter in one. However, I really like the formula of this bronzer. It's velvety smooth. It's got a ton of color payoff. My only thing is that you have to be very, very careful and very light handed with the application. But uh, I have it on today, like I said, and I just think the color is really unique. This specific shade, it's buttery smooth. Um, you can get really heavy handed with it if you're not careful. Careful, though. Next is the Flash Illuminator and this one is in the shade number five, Night Light. Now I think this, obviously this is not going to be a highlighter on my skin, but I did use it today as just an overall uh, face bronzer kind of to warm up my skin before I went in with that powder bronzer. It's a really pretty golden, almost moussey texture. It's got a lot more color payoff than what I was actually expecting. And what it would be really nice to use as is kind of all over your face as a complexion warmer or something to use underneath your makeup to make your face look a little bit darker. Uh, that's the way that I'm probably going to use this. However, I can't see myself really going out and spending the full money for this. I'll have to look at the price um, and I'll insert it right here. But I feel like when I looked at this at Sephora before I actually got this in, it was a little bit on the pricey side. So I don't believe it would be something that I would just immediately gravitate towards. Next product is also by Estee Edit and it is the Blackest Liner. So this is actually a marker liner. So it's got that really big felt tip. I was not expecting to like this. I am wearing it today. Now I will say today is the first day that I have worn this and you guys know my struggle with liquid eyeliners or felt tip liners. Normally they want to transfer onto my lids since I do have hooded eyelids. Uh, I have been wearing this for the past hour and a half I would say and I haven't noticed any transfer which is normally a good sign. Normally if a product is going to transfer on my eyes it will do it within the first 30 minutes, you know, maybe 45 minutes. So this has not done that and I, I did enjoy the thick kind of marker tip. I didn't really think I would like that, but I didn't have any problems applying my winged liner. Uh, so yeah, this was actually pretty interesting. The last product by Estee Edit is the Edgiest Up and Out Double Mascara. So this has two different sides. You've got one side that is supposed to lift and curl. So it's this very short kind of stubby 
uh, tip and then the other side is kind of just like a traditional mascara wand it's supposed to give you volume I really like this side for my bottom lashes I'm not a huge fan of it for my top lashes but I do like the lift side for my top lashes this is a really wet formula so if you don't like that type of mascara you may not like this but overall I have not noticed it to clump on my lashes or do anything you know out of the ordinary uh, but you know, I would say that I've I've tried and I do have better mascaras in my collection So I can't say that this was a total winner, but it wasn't a loser next up is the bare minerals invisible light duo So this is what I talked about in my travel makeup bag if you guys watch that video I've had so many people ask me what my thoughts are on this product uh, basically because I think a lot of people are intrigued to see if these are really like a cheaper version of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. So first of all, uh, this is the only powder I used while I was on vacation and while I was in Florida. And my, basically what it comes down to is I like this for quick everyday light dusting of powder. I wouldn't gravitate towards this for my everyday, or not everyday, for a very full coverage look. Uh, just because I don't really think that first of all the glow side the glow side is very very subtle You're not gonna get you know an intense glow At all. It's very subtle uh, And then the matte side is gonna be for those of you who just really don't like that powdery look if you like a Supernatural skin like look kind of like what I have on today uh, you will like this duo. However, if you're someone who needs a lot of powder to control oil, or if you're just someone who likes a powder that gives you a little bit more coverage, this really isn't going to do that for you. But overall, I do like this for just everyday quick setting. It works well for on my dry skin. Uh, I would say that my only disappointment was the glow side. I just I don't really find. Let me show you. Let me just put some on right now and see if you guys can pick up on anything. I mean, do you see anything different from this side? I mean, I don't have it on this side. I have it on this side. So maybe there's a little bit more of a glow than what there was before, but honestly, it's not one of those highlighters that I'm like, oh, have to have. Next up is the Nuance line by Selma Hayek and I got quite a few of these products in after I got back from vacation and I am using quite a few on my face today. The one that I'm not going to talk about everything because I wasn't thoroughly impressed with everything in the line but the one thing that I really enjoyed is the Blur Perfection Primer. This is very similar to the Smashbox original primer except this is a little bit thicker and I feel like it may be a little bit more effective at blurring imperfections uh, because I have very light coverage on today, but when I look at my skin in the mirror, I don't see pores popping out. Uh, so I am a really big fan of this primer. I'm gonna keep this on my desk and use it more, but overall, this is what I was really impressed with from the Nuance line. A few other products I tried from the line were the, uh, let's see, this is the Naturally Luminous Concealer the contour and illuminate duo and the uh, endless eye effect shadow collection in the shade smoke signal so this is an eyeshadow palette so i'm going to start out with the concealer uh, the concealer is a click pin and i could not get any product out you guys i mean nothing is coming out of this i've sat here and i've clicked and i've clicked and i've clicked uh, when i first opened it i was getting a little bit of product out but it's it's like there's almost nothing in there or maybe the formula is too thick to actually be in a pen form. So I would not suggest this if you are looking into that. Uh, today I am wearing a little bit of the uh, contour and highlight duo. I didn't really put the highlight on my cheeks. I just swatched it on the back of my hand. And it's a very like opalescent highlighter. Kind of just like a standard cream highlighter. I wouldn't say that... You know, when I look at it, I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, you know, blows my mind. Uh, but I was a fan of the cream contour. It actually blended out really nicely on my skin. I thought it was going to be really dark based on this color right here. But, I mean, it was a nice cool tone shade and it blended out uh, very well. So that's what I have to say about that. As far as the eyeshadows go, these were a total dud for me. They are just not very pigmented at all. And the fallout... 
The fallout is what I had a big issue with. I had a problem with this specific shade right here. It's, it doesn't have a name, but the fallout on it is just really bad. Even when you apply it to your skin, you can still see the shadow flakes on there. So um, I guess I wouldn't say necessarily that I was too disappointed in the pigmentation because they do have an okay pigmentation. I guess it's just the overall formula uh, just didn't blow my mind. I mean, there's a lot more shadows out there. I know at the drugstore that can perform a little bit better than these. Um, so these are all the swatches on the back of my hand. And you can see with just one straight shot, there's still some patchiness going through this gunmetal shade. The black is decent. I will say that the black does have decent pigmentation. This color right here is the one that I had a lot of trouble with though. So the last few products are actually skincare products that were suggested by you guys, or I guess the brand uh, was suggested by you guys, and it's Paula's Choice. So I did a recent video where I was just talking about, you know, my skincare, and someone commented, and they were like, you should really look into Paula's Choice. It's a very affordable brand that's all natural, and they were just like raving about it. So literally about four or five days later, Paula's Choice contacted me and asked me if I wanted to try some of their skincare. So I said yes because that person was just raving about it. And then I did a video, uh, I think it was my travel makeup bag where I was telling you guys how I was looking forward to trying the skincare line. And I had comment after comment after comment being like, you need to try this from the line. I love Polish Choice. So many people were a fan of the skincare line. So uh, I have used uh, three products from the line that I that I have. I have more products to try out, but I have tried three. And right now I have a slight flare up of KP on my face, which is keratosis polaris. And it kind of stems from me having atopic dermatitis. Basically, anytime I'm around dogs and they lick my face, uh, sometimes I will get these little bumps that come up on my face or my arms. Those of you who have KP, you know what I'm talking about. And once the bumps kind of die down, my face is left with just this dry layer where the bumps were. So I've been trying to use these three products to help with that. And they really have. I was very shocked because um, just looking at the ingredients, I was thinking that these may irritate my skin. So the first thing I was using, or I've been using, is the Paula's Choice Resist Daily Smoothing Treatment with 5% AHA and glycolic acid. So this is for normal to dry skin, and it's basically an exfoliant that you put on your skin and you leave there. So this is why I've been using this, is I just want to exfoliate all the dead skin. Um, this does sting my face a little bit where the dryness is, I will say that. However, it only lasts for a couple seconds, and I really think that this helped to kind of eliminate the dryness on my face. So I have been using this, and that's like my initial impression of that right now. The next product I've been using is the Paula's Choice Resist Intensive Repair Cream. So this is for really dry skin, and it's basically just like an every, for me, it would be like an everyday moisturizer. For some people with normal skin, this might just be a nighttime moisturizer, but it's a pretty thick formula, and when you put it on, it feels just like an everyday moisturizer for me. Uh, but I do notice that the tightness goes away on my skin when I put this on. So that tightness that I'm feeling from the flare-up, uh, that goes away when I put this on. So I've been slightly impressed with that. And my favorite product I've tried from the line so far is the Resist Anti-Aging Eye Cream with Shea Butter and Peptides. This has a really unique texture to it, almost like a balm texture. It's a very thick eye cream, but you can still wear it underneath your makeup. It doesn't make my concealer break up or anything like that, but it's a super thick formula. I just it makes, it almost feels like a primer for your under eye area. It almost blends into my skin as like this balm that sits underneath my eyes and almost just reduces wrinkles for my makeup. So I have been loving this. All right guys, so these are pretty much all of the products that I have in my collection right now that are fairly new. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will be back to regular scheduling this week so you can expect at least another video towards the end of the week. And also, I will have another wedding weekend video up. So thank you to everyone who watched that video and gave me your feedback and what you thought I should talk about. 
Uh, so yeah, it's time for me to film another wedding weekend video and that will be up this upcoming Saturday. My battery is dying, but there will be a new wedding weekend video up this Saturday. And I just want to thank you guys for being patient with me while I was on vacation. Some of you guys know the struggles that we had while we were gone. Uh, so thank you guys for all your patience and your love. And uh, yeah, I guess I will see you in a video later this week. Thanks for watching. Bye.